In 1994, Jeff Bezos made a decision that seemed ridiculous to most people. He quit his high-paying job on Wall Street to sell books online. Yeah, you heard that right. Books on the internet. Now, remember, this was 1994. The internet wasn't exactly what it is today. Barely anyone was using it. Only around 0.4% of the world's population was even online. What, what is internet that, anyway? Can you explain what internet is? No, she can't say anything in 10 seconds or less. Uh -huh. People thought he was out of his mind. But Bezos saw something that no one else did. While everyone else was focused on the present, Jeff Bezos was already thinking decades into the future. Today, Amazon is worth over a trillion dollars. It's one of the most powerful companies in the world, dominating industries like e-commerce, cloud computing, entertainment, and more. So how did he pull it off? In this video, we're going to tell Jeff Bezos the story, explore the bold decisions he made, and highlight the key lessons you can take away from his journey. Whether it's his relentless focus on customers, his risk-taking, or his long-term vision, there's a lot we can learn from how Jeff Bezos built Amazon. No matter how good we are, we can still be better. You can always be better. Customers have a divine discontent and they teach you if you listen to customers. So how does a guy go from a high paying Wall Street job to selling books out of his garage? Well, it wasn't a spur of the moment decision. Jeff Bezos isn't that kind of guy. It all started with a crazy number. A number so big it stopped him in its tracks. The internet was growing at 2,300% a year. Let that sink in for a second. 2,300%. Most people would see that and think, cool, the internet's growing. And then go back to their cushy Wall Street job. But not Bezos. He knew this was something huge, something that could change everything. There are lots of advantages to shopping online, but one of the most compelling ones is how much time you can save. Time is the most precious commodity in the late 20th century. And the fact that you don't have to drive, park, do all those things that make life complicated when you go shopping in the physical world is a huge advantage of online shopping. But walking away from a fat paycheck isn't easy. So Bezos came up with this framework, something he called the regret minimization framework. And it's not as fancy as it sounds. It's actually pretty simple. He asked himself, when I'm 80, will I regret not taking this chance? And just like that, he knew. He'd regret it. So he left Wall Street, packed up, and moved to Seattle to start Amazon. Jeff Bezos is now one of the richest people in the world. But he got there by spending his money wisely. You might have heard of the now famous door desk story. Instead of buying fancy office furniture, Bezos and his team built desks out of old doors. Yep, that's actual doors turned into desks. And no, this wasn't some hipster DIY project. It was a statement about Amazon's values. Well, okay, it was a little bit hipster, but who am I to judge? I mean, I'd love for someone to make a YouTube video about my door desk project journey someday. Anyway, Bezos wasn't interested in spending money on shiny offices or flashy perks. He was laser focused on growth. Why waste money on fancy furniture when you can build your business instead? Those door desks became a symbol of Amazon's early culture. A reminder that it didn't matter how things looked, it mattered how well they worked. And even as Amazon grew into a giant, those door desks stuck around. And if you ask me, it seems like they've used the same approach to design the Amazon website. But again, who might I to judge? Sucks. So for a guy obsessed with tight money management, at least he was swimming in cash generated from his business, right? Well, wrong. The only thing he was more opposed to than luxury was generating profits. Now, in most businesses, that is a major problem. And for Wall Street, it was more than a problem. It was a crisis. Analysts and investors were pounding their fists, demanding that Amazon starting to turn a profit. I mean, it's business 101, right? You make money or you die. But Bezos... Nah, he didn't play by those rules. He didn't just ignore the noise, he laughed. <laughs> Bezos had this infamous booming laugh, and he wasn't shy about using it whenever people asked, Hey, Jeff, when are you going to start making money? I, stuff, but I will endeavor, and I'm a very happy Amazon investor. Why? Because he was focused on one thing, the future. Ah, that sweet, sweet delayed gratification. That's something we know all too well here at Economic Blueprint. We've been chasing that first 1,000 subscriber mark for some time now. 
Maybe you'll help by just clicking on that glorious subscribe button. It's free. Hashtag no profits. To Bezos, profits were a distraction. What mattered was growth. He knew that the more money he put back into Amazon, the bigger and more powerful it would become in the long run. So while everyone else was obsessed with quarterly reports and stock prices, Bezos was obsessed with reinvestment. And reinvest he did. Every dollar Amazon made, Bezos poured right back into the business. More warehouses, better shipping, new technology. He wasn't interested in making a quick buck. He was building something that would outlast everyone else. But here's the kicker. Bezos was right. While Wall Street couldn't stop talking about Amazon's losses, Bezos was busy building the infrastructure that would eventually make Amazon into a giant. He was playing the long game. And if that meant losing money for a few years to secure Amazon's future dominance, so be it. He was all in. And when Amazon finally turned that corner, the same people who were laughing at him suddenly couldn't get enough. That, my friend, is the power of thinking beyond the next paycheck. Now, here's where Bezos takes the long-term thinking to a whole new level. It's the early 2000s. Amazon is finally starting to find its feet in e-commerce. But instead of just focusing on selling stuff online, Bezos throws down a $2 billion bet on cloud computing. Yeah, that's right, cloud computing. Now, back then, most people didn't even know what the cloud was. I mean, this is when companies were still relying on their own servers, their own storage systems. The internet was growing, sure, but it wasn't like today. So when Bezos announced that Amazon was going to start renting out computing power and storage space, everyone was like, wait, why is a retail company getting into tech? Ah, the classic mix of book sales and cloud infrastructure as a service. Just rolls off the tongue. But Bezos wasn't thinking like a retailer anymore. He was thinking about the future of the internet. He saw a massive opportunity that no one else did. While other companies were focused on what they were selling, Bezos was focused on how businesses would run in the digital age. He knew that companies would need scalable, reliable infrastructure to power their operations. And he wanted Amazon to be the one providing it. And when you think about it, this has always been the foundational notion for Bezos. Books was just a monetization tactic. His strategy revolved around the importance of the internet, which of course is something we take for granted in 2024, but it wasn't like that back then. Anyway, he launched Amazon Web Services, or AWS, and people thought it was nuts. What? Amazon was still barely turning a profit from its e-commerce side, and now they were sinking $2 billion into building massive data centers? But Bezos wasn't concerned about making that money back right away. He knew that AWS would be a game changer, even if it took years for people to catch on. And catch on they did. Fast forward a few years and AWS suddenly becomes the backbone of the internet. Netflix, Airbnb, NASA, all of these companies are running on AWS. Suddenly was started as a crazy bet, becomes one of Amazon's most profitable divisions. Today, AWS generates tens of billions of dollars in revenue each year. It's the lifeblood of countless businesses around the world. Bezos successfully built a glorious retail company, and now he helped build the infrastructure for the entire digital economy. So that $2 billion gamble? Yeah, it paid off. Big time. But of course, behind every successful person is a bunch of bad ideas. Or at least some. Amazon introduced a, a new phone that's very much like um, a lot of phones that are already out there. It's slightly larger than, the, uh, than Apple's iPhone. For Bezos, the best example is the Fire Phone. Yeah, you probably don't even remember it. And there's a reason for that. In 2014, Bezos decided that Amazon should get into the smartphone business. Hey, that's pretty good. The idea was simple. Amazon had mastered e-commerce, so why not give customers a device that made shopping even easier? Enter the Fire Phone. It launched with a ton of hype, promising all kinds of flashy features like 3D imaging. But it bombed, like really bombed. Amazon announced its first phone, the Fire Phone, over the summer, but apparently it has a hard time selling the device. To be fair, Bezos wasn't afraid to take risks, but risk comes with a price tag. It cost Amazon hundreds of millions of dollars. The Fire Phone barely sold, and within a year, it was pulled from the market. Most companies would have been shaken after such a massive failure, but here's the thing about Bezos. He didn't see it as a failure at all. He viewed it as part of the process. Bezos famously said, 
If you're going to take bold bets, there will be experiments that fail. But if you don't fail, you're not innovating enough. In other words, failure wasn't something to fear. It was a necessary step on the path to innovation. And that's what set Bezos apart. Even when he stumbled, he didn't let it stop him. He picked up, learned from it, and moved on. The Fire Phone may have flopped, but it didn't slow down Amazon's momentum one bit. If anything, it just reinforced Bezos' belief that taking risk was essential to building something truly groundbreaking. Now, let's talk about what might be Bezos' most brilliant concept, the flywheel effect. You've probably never heard of it, but it's the foundation of how Amazon grew into the behemoth it is today. So, what's a flywheel? Picture this giant, heavy wheel. At first, it takes a ton of effort to get it moving. You push and push, and it barely budges. But once it starts to turn, the momentum builds. And pretty soon, the wheel is spinning on its own, with hardly any effort. That's the flywheel. Bezos applied this idea to Amazon's business model. He realized that if he could create a system where each part of the business reinforced the others, it would build its own momentum. Here's how it works. Low prices attract more customers. More customers attract more sellers. More sellers means more products, and more products lead to lower prices. And the wheel keeps spinning. You see where I'm going with this? The genius of the flywheel isn't just in lowering prices. It's in creating a system where each success feeds into the next. Every time Amazon added more products, improved shipping, or reduced prices, it made the whole system more efficient and powerful. And once that flywheel got going, it became unstoppable. Amazon has briefly become the second US listed firm to have a market value of more than $1 trillion. Amazon has become the second company on the US stock market to surpass a trillion dollars in value after Apple. The more customers Amazon gained, the more it could invest in logistics, which meant faster shipping, which meant happier customers and more sales. The entire business was designed to reinforce itself, and that's why it grew exponentially. While competitors were stuck focusing on one part of their business, Amazon's flywheel was powering its growth on multiple fronts at once. This wasn't just about building an online store, it was about creating a machine that would generate its own momentum. And once Bezos got that wheel spinning, there was no stopping it. One of my favorite concepts practiced by Jeff Bezos is his disagree and commit. Everyone can speak up and everyone will be heard, but once the decision is made, everyone fully supports it. In a business context, chasing consensus might actually be harmful. So, how did Jeff Bezos turn a small online bookstore into the empire that dominates industries today? It wasn't luck, it was long-term thinking and relentless focus on the future. Take Amazon Prime. It wasn't just a way to speed up shipping. It was a calculated move to lock in customer loyalty. Bezos knew that the more people relied on Amazon, the harder it would be for competitors to catch up. And today, Prime has over 200 million members. Those members shop more, spend more, and help fuel Amazon's massive growth. And then there's AWS, Amazon Web Services. Back when people were still figuring out the internet, Bezos saw the next frontier, cloud computing. While others were thinking about e-commerce, Bezos invested billions into building the infrastructure of the internet itself. And today, AWS is one of Amazon's biggest profit engines, powering companies from Netflix to NASA. But here's the real secret to Bezos' success. He didn't just build a company, he built a system, a flywheel, where each part of the business reinforces the other. Once it started spinning, it became unstoppable. The lesson here is simple. Bezos didn't focus on short-term profits or quick wins. He played the long game, He made big, bold bets that would take years, sometimes decades, to pay off. And while everyone else was chasing the next quarter's results, Bezos was busy building a system that would dominate for years to come. If you want to watch a video about a family that didn't care about next quarter's results and that also built systems that would dominate for years, check out this video on the secret family that rules Europe.